Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and Apple recently released a 13 inch MacBook Pro that promised an 80% increase in graphical performance. Now that's the same increase that Apple promised on their recently released MacBook Air that we also tested out in a gaming video right up here if you wanted to watch it. But I was really interested to see just how well this 13 inch MacBook Pro could handle gaming. But as many of you watching this video know, gaming on Mac OS is possible, but there aren't that many titles to choose from. And worst of all, the multi-platform games that are supported on Mac OS usually run worse than their Windows counterparts. So unlike that MacBook Air video, for this one, I will actually be installing Windows on this MacBook Pro to get a bigger selection of titles and hopefully better performance. And installing Windows on a Mac is actually super easy, simple, and free to do if you don't mind having a Windows watermark in the bottom right corner. All you have to do is go to Windows website or click the link in the description, download the 64-bit Windows ISO file, then open up the Boot Camp Assistant on your Mac, make sure your Mac has a big enough hard drive so you can partition it and have a Windows partition, assign how much space you want, go through all the necessary steps, and you'll be setting up and then running Windows on your Mac in no time at all. Now we have full access to the Windows operating system. And most importantly for us Mac OS fans, we can run our Mac OS applications, our preferred operating system, and then switch over to Windows whenever we want to play a few PC games. However, even after all this, can the 13 inch 2020 MacBook Pro play Windows games? And is it secretly a gaming laptop? Well, to really answer this question, I decided to run through a list of PC games, both new and old, to gauge just how realistic of a scenario it is to use a 13-inch MacBook Pro for gaming. Now, for these tests, I am using the $1,799 version of the MacBook Pro, complete with a 10th generation Intel quad-core i5 processor running at 2 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the integrated Intel Iris Plus graphics. The games for all of these tests are also set to a resolution of 1440 by 900. Now first I wanted to start off with a game I knew would run, and honestly this is already a game on macOS, so installing Windows is kind of not necessary. But many of you asked me if League of Legends runs well on a Mac, and of course it does. League of Legends is a game that is basically made to run on the lowest end desktops and laptops out there, and on this 13 inch MacBook Pro, we can run the game at the highest settings and achieve frame rates of over 90 FPS. So yes, League of Legends does run extremely well on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and it would probably run even if you hooked it up to a literal toaster. Another game I wanted to test that is older and also pretty low-end is Counter-Strike Go. This is a game we tested on the MacBook Air and got some okay-ish results on Mac OS, so I wanted to see how this ran on Windows. Booting the game up, I kept it at the default high settings it recommended, and I was able to achieve some pretty smooth gameplay results hitting 60 frames per second. But I did run into the occasional frame drop and stutters along the way, which is definitely not an ideal situation for a fast-paced, twitchy response game like a shooter. But lowering the game to medium settings pretty much solved these frame drops, and I was able to play the game in 60 frames per second. Here is another game that so many people requested, Fortnite. Honestly, I am awful at this game and just not a fan of it in general, which you can tell by the default skin that I'm using, but hey, I'm just here to test how smooth this thing will run on the MacBook Pro. Now, here's another game that does run on macOS, but the macOS optimization is awful. So I was hoping and I was seeing better results with Windows running this on medium settings, but the frame rate was sporadic, jumping between 40 to 60 frames per second constantly. Playing a competitive game like Fortnite where reaction times are lightning fast, having your frame rates dip is basically a death sentence. So I pushed the game to the lowest settings and for the most part I was able to achieve a constant 60 frames per second. Still, don't get me wrong, that is not an ideal situation and I was expecting much better results out of a game like Fortnite which can run at 60 frames per second on the iPad Pro or the latest iPhone. So. This is kind of discouraging. Next, I wanted to move on to games that I was personally more familiar with, so why not check out StarCraft 2? 
I bet you couldn't tell I'm a StarCraft fan. StarCraft 2 is another game where I want that 60 frames per second because the game requires so many quick and constant actions, microing your units and macroing your minerals. Unfortunately, on high settings, while it's certainly playable, when there was a lot of enemies on screen, the game was around 30 to 50 frames per second, not hitting my 60 FPS target. Setting the game to medium settings pushed that frame rate to 60, but in this late game scenario where there's tons of enemies on screen, the frame rate could occasionally dip to around 40 frames per second. Setting the game on low settings achieved a constant 60 FPS or above, usually maxing out at around 100 frames per second. I was also pretty disappointed with this result as well. StarCraft 2 is an older game, and while we are working with integrated graphics here, Apple was promising up to an 80% boost, and this is still not enough to be playing even older games at high settings. Now in this video, I've been testing a lot of games where it's very important to hit 60 frames per second. So I wanted to test out a game where it's not as important. A turn-based game like Civilization VI should be completely playable at 30 frames per second. Civilization VI also has an inbuilt benchmarking tool that shows you what the late game maxed out scenario would look like with tons of units and structures on screen. Benchmarking this game on medium settings gave us an FPS of 30 and maxed out around 40 frames per second, more than enough to be playable for a turn-based game. I also wanted to test out an older title like Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor because this was a game that I played on the PlayStation 4, which is a very popular console. And on the PlayStation 4, this game maxes out at 30 frames per second. So the results here were actually pretty good. The average FPS, even on high settings, was 39 frames per second. Running that same benchmark and lowering it down to medium settings netted us an average FPS of 46 frames per second and overall a much more stable frame rate. Lowering it all the way down to low settings gave us an average FPS of almost 60. So this benchmark actually compared really well, and it seems to be giving us frame rates that are above the PlayStation 4, but this is an older title. Now there was two popular games that I really wanted to benchmark on this 13-inch MacBook Pro, but unfortunately I just couldn't do it. The first one was the extremely popular Call of Duty Warzone. And the game literally wouldn't boot up, it just couldn't identify the graphics card in the MacBook Pro. This integrated graphics card is newer on Intel's 10th generation chips, so it could be a driver issue that gets sorted out eventually, but for now, this MacBook Pro is not capable of playing Call of Duty Warzone. Another game that I ran into problems testing was Destiny 2. This is a game I featured on the 16-inch MacBook Pro gaming video, and for some reason, I just couldn't get it to work. I would actually boot into the game, but then it just kept giving me some error, and I just couldn't play it, so unfortunately, Destiny and Call of Duty Warzone are not included in this video. But I still was searching for a game to test for this last test that was more graphically intensive than the other ones we checked out. Battlefield 5 was my last shot to see if we could get this running, and we did. Now, for this game, you can expect a miracle of hitting 60 FPS on the internal integrated GPU, and from the start, I'd recommend setting this to the lowest settings possible. Now, even though this isn't ideal, and I'm pretty sure most of you would agree with me that 60 FPS is the ideal situation, for Battlefield 5, the game was playable, staying above 30 frames per second and maxing out around 40 frames per second. And while the PC Master Race is laughing at us right now, 30 FPS is a frame rate that is chosen for a lot of console games, so it's not unplayable, and even on the lowest settings, Battlefield 5 actually looked really good running on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. And while it wouldn't be my ideal choice to play this on, I could definitely play through this entire campaign at these settings, no problem. And honestly, this was the game I spent the most time testing because I was having so much fun with it. So look at that, we were able to run all of these different types of games on a MacBook Pro. So is the MacBook Pro a secret gaming laptop? Absolutely not. While you will get passable use with older titles and more casual games, the 13-inch MacBook Pro simply isn't meant for gaming. The biggest disappointment of this lineup for me remains the fact that there's no dedicated graphics card option, which would make these games run a lot smoother. And while even then it probably wouldn't match what you could get on a much cheaper gaming PC laptop, it would still get us a lot closer to our desired results. So yeah, if you are planning on playing games on your MacBook Pro, definitely temper down your expectations, and if you are planning on purchasing a 13-inch MacBook Pro for the sole purpose of gaming, 
what's wrong with you? Obviously, you can get much better results and at a much lower price point by buying a Windows gaming laptop. But I know there's so many of you out there that prefer Mac OS, just like me, and you might occasionally want to play some lighter game titles. But anyway, I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you leave me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, be sure to let me know what do you think of the gaming performance of the 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro? Are you just as disappointed as I am? As always, if you want to help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.